In this video, we're going to revisit straight line motion. I said the following graph represents the velocity of a particle at time t. I guess it doesn't make sense because it's got negative values, but whatever. All right, so the velocity, let's just say it's like miles per hour and hours. What does the area from 3 to 5 of x is represent? So it's this area here. That's 2 by 4, so it's an area of 8, but it's miles per hour is the unit in the x direction. The unit in the y direction is hours, and those cancel out, and we get miles. All right, so it's an 8 miles is the area under this graph. And what does 8 miles represent? It represents how far I went from time 3 to time 5. So the area under the velocity function is telling me something about my position. It's changed by 8. So if you integrate velocity, you get information about position. If we did the same thing for acceleration, you would see that that goes backwards to velocity. So as a review, when we were doing this earlier in the year with derivatives, if you took the derivative of position, you got velocity. If you took the derivative of velocity, you get acceleration. But integration is kind of the reverse of differentiation. It's kind of undoing the derivative. So I took the integral of acceleration. I'm going to get velocity. Take the integral antiderivative of velocity, I get position. And that allows me to do problems like this. I know the velocity of a particle. I want to find its position at time equals 4, if my starting position is 0. All right, so let's do that. I, I know if I have velocity, I can go backwards to my position by doing an antiderivative. So I take the antiderivative of velocity. That's the antiderivative of 2t plus 1. It's going to be t squared plus t. All right, so this is my position function plus c. Now, I don't know what that c is. I right, remember whenever you're doing an antiderivative, you had this plus c because I'm not sure if there was a constant in my original expression. So how do I figure out what c is? I have some extra information. I know that I start at position 0. So starting means time is 0 and position should be 0. So my position 0 when I plug in 0 for t. And luckily, everything 0. This tells me that that c value that I have right there has to be 0. So now I know my exact position function is just t squared plus t. All right, so I use some extra information that I had in order to find that value of c so I know the exact position function I have. And now I want to know the position at time 4, so now I plug in 4. get 20. So my exact position is 20. I, my position is changed by 20. So if I had started at negative 2, my answer would be 18. Um, but knowing that kind of initial condition where I'm starting out will help me find C and then find the exact position at the time I care about. All right, next one, acceleration of a particle is A of t equals 9.8. Right, maybe that 9.8 looks familiar to you from your physics days. I want to find the position function for the particle if v of 0 is 4 and p of 0 is 10. So I can go directly from acceleration to velocity by doing an antiderivative. So velocity is the antiderivative of acceleration, which is the antiderivative of 9.8, which turns into just 9.8t plus c. And now I know when my time is 0, my velocity is 4. So my velocity is 4 when time is 0. And it's really nice when they give you time 0 because this just goes away and right away it tells me c is 4. So my actual velocity function is 9.8t plus 4. So knowing kind of where you start tells you your c value. And now I want to find position. Position is just the antiderivative of velocity, which is the antiderivative of this function I just found, which is 9.8t squared over 2 it turns into 4.9t squared plus 4t plus c. Again, I don't know what c is yet, but I know if I plug in 0 for t, my position is equal to 10. And again, all this stuff cancels out, and that tells me c is 10. So my final answer, my exact answer for position, is 4.9t squared plus 4t plus 10. Right. So you can see the basic process of this is we're going backwards one antiderivative at a time. 
and we have to use this information they give us in order to find the C value. Because if we don't know the C value, or we can't know the exact position, we would just have these Cs, uh, but by knowing some extra information, we find the exact position at any given time. All right, and here's one for you to try on your own. You know acceleration. Are you gonna find the velocity of the particle at time three if it started at rest? All right, so go ahead and try that on your own, and I'll show you the answer in three, two, one. All right, and here's your final answer. All right, hopefully you were able to get to here, and then maybe you're a little confused because they didn't tell you what the value at uh, a time was, but started at rest. Starting means t equals zero. At rest means you're not moving, so your velocity is zero. So it's basically just like the previous problems, but they say v of zero is zero. All right, at zero time, my velocity is zero. So I plug in zeros for t, my velocity is zero, and that tells me c is zero. All right, so it's just a bunch of zeros that happen. All right, and because c is zero, that's my velocity function. All right, so here's a quick summary. I right, differentiation and integration are opposites. So if you know you go position, velocity, acceleration for derivatives, you do the reverse for integration. Right, you may need to use the accumulation of change formula. We actually didn't have to use it in uh, these examples at all. Actually, we could have used it if I did it in a slightly different way, but you may have to use the accumulation of change formula. Right, and make sure you're going in the right direction. If you're going from acceleration to velocity, make sure you're doing an integral and not a derivative. If you're going from velocity to acceleration, make sure you're doing a derivative and not an uh, uh, integral. All right, so just make sure you're kind of focused on which direction you're going and which uh, calculus tool you need to use.